All right, I finally have time to do this. Here is a video of my light show for 2022 to 2023. It is now January and it's time to take this thing down. So here's a quick video of how I had everything all set up. <clears throat> so I'll start in the front here. This is a P5 matrix. It's two across by six high. And that's what I use to put the tune to information on it or remind people to donate in the little donation box at the top there uh, for Wounded Warriors. Um, yeah, it's a really simple setup. On the back, you'll see how it's connected. I just have everything all daisy chained. I have all the data coming up the left side here and then going across. And you can see the wires coming in together and going to a little junction bar right there. And then inside the box, this system I'm still running an octa scroller. So there's a beagle bone black down there with an eight port octo scroller. And then that's a five volt power supply, 10 amp. And that's what runs the whole system. I run my show at about 20% on the panels. So that's plenty of power to run the whole system. And that is my tune to sign. We like the nostalgic feel of the old school light shows. So I like to have what I call a hybrid show where I still have incandescent bulbs. These are just some dumb strings. I have red and white in these little mini trees. They're just upside down tomato cages wrapped with chicken wire. And those are what I use for, we call them the mini trees. And then there's another set of them in the back there. We call those the medium trees. And they're the exact same thing. They're just white and red. And they're dumb controller. And they're controlled by a DMX uh, 16 port AC board, which I will get to a little later. But that is our mini trees. Like I said, the medium trees are just like it. They're just a little taller. They're about four feet tall. And they are all being controlled. There's eight of those. And they are all being controlled by this controller box here. This is a plain old controller box. This is just one of eight in the show this year. Inside this box, you'll see kind of a rat's nest of wires. Over on this side, I have four of the DMX SSR 16 boards. Those things are kind of old, actually. They've been around for a long time. I've, I have 17 of those boards. And they are what do my incandescent. I've got, again, four of those boards. They're 16 channels. So one board does the little mini trees up front. Another board does the medium trees on the side. And then I've got two more boards that do these little shooter poles on the side as well. The incandescent bulbs on those. And that's what runs that part of the show. On this side, I've got three five volt power boxes. Got little LEDs on so I can check what the voltage output is. There is a 32 port cult board that runs the mega tree and runs this front yard show. As you can see, I got room for expansion. And then I've got a little mono price, a little five volt, eight port gigabit switch. Those switches are great because they work off five volts, which is really nice. So I can just plug them right into the five volt power supply and don't have to have that little extra dongle hanging out. All my pass-throughs on the side are glanded. They've got little glands on the sides there for water retention. And then all my wires run through on this side and I just put a AC duct cover over them to keep the rain out. And because we live in Arizona, of course, we don't get much snow. So I don't have to worry about any infiltration from below. And then of course I do have uh, the fans of the power supplies running inside the box. That kind of keeps everything nice and cool. And that's the first box. And there's my little cheat sheet as to how I hook everything up. I always print those out. And that is about it. Oh, actually I'm gonna move on and show these what I call shooter poles. So these poles are a combination of red and white C9s. And then they also have, I think, 390 pixels in each, something like that. So I use some bus coil strips and I put the little C9 through the bus coil strip. I had to trim it out a little bit to make it fit. That was a pain in the butt. And then there's a pixel. So it goes red pixel, white pixel, all the way up the tree. And each section is about 20 bulbs of each color. So that first, I don't know, 18 inches or so is red and white C9s. And then also a section of 
RGB. And they go all the way up. And those are just another little way to add a wash into the show. In the front, the main part of the show, of course, is the mega tree. And this mega tree is about 24 feet tall or so, maybe, maybe 22, something like that. And this is the fourth iteration of my mega tree for the shows after 10 years. And this has, of course, Buscoil strips running up and down. And then I've got 200 pixels per strip and they are zigzagged up. So I go up starting from the bottom, I go one, three, five, seven, nine, all the way up to the top and then I come back down the holes. So I get all my power injection and all my data inputs at the bottom. It makes it nice and clean. And I don't have any sort of support structure going across the middle at all. I just let them hang and they always hang nice and straight. I can adjust them at the bottom with the little straps, little zip tie straps. But other than that, that is the mega tree. The top or at the top of the tree, I just took some electrical um, hanger, whatever that's called, and I cut a section of it and then I notched it as you can see there. And I just kind of formed it into the rough shape of a crescent. And then I drilled holes in the bottom and anchored in eye bolts. And then there are some brackets on the back for support which I'll get to if I walk around here. And the whole structure is just kind of welded together nice and easy. There's a little section of fence topper and then some cross braces coming up, angle braces. And I figured if I put the pole coming up the middle in the kind of the center of those arms, that it would be balanced so it's not like a cantilever. Most designs have the pole coming up near the back and then you get, you get problems with it um, wanting to tip over forward. So I kind of figured if I move that center of gravity, so to speak, forward, that the tree itself would hold itself up and it does. You can see there's one main guy wire on the back here that comes all the way down to an anchor point on the back of the tree structure right here. The tree structure itself is just some treated four by fours. And then what I do is I use those little dog arbor anchors that just kind of screw into the ground. So I screw those down and then I attach them with just a little plate on the end. And that holds it from moving at all. On this side, I had to put a little block in underneath there so that the tree stayed vertical because my yard kind of slopes a little bit. But again, they're just held down by those anchors. The tree that I designed myself, I put a, I welded a little crank, a little boat crank onto some top, actually that's not top rail, that is regular fence post rail. And that's about a nine foot section, eight foot section, something like that. And I welded on just little nuts as anchor points. And then I used little come alongs, of course, to, to take those, take the power of those, take the stress. And all my anchor points come down to the structure itself. So there's four anchor points. There's one in the front, two on each side, and then actually there's two in the back, so there's five anchor points. And most of the anchor points only go up about, you know, six feet or so. And then at the top of that first rail, I welded a pulley. So all I do is I take a, this is only one eighth inch braided steel. It's got like a 350 pound rating on it, so that's plenty to hold the tree up, even the strongest winds. And that goes up over that pulley and then comes down inside the tube and then it's connected at the bottom of that section of tube, which is top post or top rail fencing. So quite frankly, it's kind of engineered a little lightweight. This whole system is pretty easy to take down. I just lower the tree down on my ladder. I unhook all the little strips. I take the tree topper down take off all the little guy wires, and then the pole itself stores in my garage, and then the base structure stores in my shed. So it all goes together pretty easily. And like I said, it's very lightweight. It's not over-engineered. It doesn't have that lead pipe that everybody else uses. I don't have a big concrete slab or anything like that. I just distributed the, the anchor points around. So each, each of those anchor points has a foot and a half threaded 
stake that goes down into the ground for support. And like I said, here in Arizona, we do get wind. We don't get any snow or not a lot of rain. And that's held up really well. And then that back structure here is what's taking the main, the main tension on the front of the tree is this back one because everything wants to pull forward with the strings. So I just put one of these on the back and it balances everything out. And the tension on this isn't that great actually. I mean, I can, I can move this wire. It's not that strong. I mean, it's not that tight. And look, even my anchor points aren't that tight anymore, but the tree is still nice and solid. So that is my mega tree. Also in my front yard, I have some 50 watt floods that I reverse engineered. These are some floodlights I bought on eBay a few years ago. I got the four pack of them for like a hundred bucks, I think at most, maybe less, more like 80. And I took out the power supply and I took out its infrared system and I hot wired it directly to the chip on the board. And then I run them all off of a little dumb, little $10 Amazon China DMX controller that is inside this box right here. So each of those little controllers does two, does two of the bulbs or two of the floodlights. Little 12 volt power supply to run everything. At least I think it's 12. But you just match the power supply to what the floods need and make sure that power rating handles the boards. These boards go anywhere from five to 24 volts or something like that. So you can use any sort of power supply. Actually it says, yeah, five to 24 right there. So you can use any size power supply that you want and then just make sure you're matched to the floodlights and what it requires and it works great. The other option or the other prop in our front yard are these arches. Each of these arches has 66, uh, 28, 12, five volt strips in them. And the strips start about where the, where the tape is. They go up and over the top and stop again there. I inject power on each of the arches just to make sure everything is nice and uh, solid for whites. But that's a really simple layout as well. I just use a piece of, uh, piece of conduit. I flatten out each of the corners, put a little like one and a half inch electrical hanger bracket, just bend it all the way around the tube for support. And then I cobbled together some, some steel or one of those uh, iron fittings. I kind of make my holders for each of the sections in here. And I like using those ductile iron, that's it, ductile iron in those areas because they're heavier and they tend to hold everything down. And again, this structure isn't staked or anything, they're just held by weight. And with our wind and everything here, they don't, they don't move. Not a lot of surface area. So those are my five arches. And those arches are all again controlled from that box under the mega tree. The next layer in my show are these tree matrices. And these are Buscoil strips that go all the way to a top to a hanger bracket. And they come down and every, about a third of the way down, I have another support bracket. And then about another third of the way down, I have another support bracket. And they hold these trees to be a little matrixy. They're 150 pixels tall and they're 16 strings wide. So I think that comes out to 2,400 pixels per tree matrixy. Real simple design at the bottom of them. I bring power in on one leg and then on the other side, I bring an injection. And then I inject at the 50 mark on each string. So 50, 50 pixels up, there's injection. And what's nice about the pixels that I bought is they've got these little injection points already wired into them. Here's one right here. So it's ready to go and I just jump in power right there and I actually get both strings at one point. So here's the string going up, here's the string coming down and that's where I get the power. So I just run an injection of power and ground all the way up the second string and then I just tag onto that at three points all the way up each string. <clears throat> I use these electrical hangers to hang everything on the tree. It's real easy to take down. I just go up there with my lift and up at the very top, disconnect everything at the top and then I just roll each of these rolls up 
roll them up in pairs and put them in a bin. It's really simple. At the top, you'll also notice some little fronds stinking, sticking out. We've got palm trees here, so that's what we get in Arizona. So I wanted to kind of look like the Arizona palm fronds up there. And at night, they do look really good. I used to put the lights in the actual fronds themselves, but that was just a pain in the butt. It took forever. So I built these, and they are dumb strings. They're all icicles. So I've got red, green, blue, white, violet, and orange. So there are six separate color strings up there. I don't use pixels because, again, I like the nostalgia of the lights changing, not just changing colors. So you end up with a little movement, actually, when you change between colors, which is kind of nice because it kind of gives that nostalgic look. There is also a little floodlight up there. That is a little smart, I think it was called smart flood, something like that, that I've had for many years, about 15 years now. And I'll show you that driver in just a second in that box. So that's the one tree on the left side of my show. And then I've got another tree on the right side that's the exact same thing. You got the exact same setup at the top. You got the palm fronds and you've even got the little floodlight. I gotta trim my trees. Inside the box that controls these is another one of these Plano boxes. <clears throat> and this side again, it's just covered from the rain. <clears throat> On that side, I've got cable glands protecting everything from weather. There's another little thing I had to add this year. I haven't put a cover on it yet. <laughs> And inside this box is a very similar setup. You've got the AC boards on this side, and those AC drive this particular board. That bottom one drives all the lights on the house that are AC. And it also drives those palm fronts. The middle two boards are just spares. I don't, I'm not using them right now. And then the top board here uh, drives, I forget what that drives. Oh, that drives another set of um, the poles in the front. And then three power supplies over here to give power injection enough for that tree matricy. This side is a Culp 16 board. Love the Culp boards, love them a lot. They're very, very good. Here's the little rainbow brain it's called that drives the little floodlights. There are four of these in the show. They each drive two floodlights off each port so I can drive 10 floodlights off this. And that's just, that's the only 12 volt thing I've got in my show. Everything else is five volt pixel wise. So it's got its own 12 volt little adapter right below it there that it's attached to. And that's running DMX. I also have one of these little mono price, little uh, switches, network switches. Those again are great because they work off five volts. They just plug right into the board or right into these power supplies. I love these cult boards because they allow me to run only one data cable between all my boxes used to have just a mess of data e131 and dmx so now all i do is run e131 to the board and then i output off the board see those little two red and white wires there i output a serial which is a dmx protocol and that runs over and runs into these dmx boards and also the dmx flood so therefore i'm able to do all that with conversion from that board at each of the locations very simple for wiring On my house, speaking of wiring, I've got a sub panel that I wired in. So I used two gauge wire, as you can see up there, is actually some leftover wire I had when I wired my spa. I run that through an Anderson plug so I can disconnect them. And then I've also got those red wires there. Those are, those are just 10 gauge THHN wires. So I've got power on the two whites and ground on the red, and that comes into that separate box. And then I run excuse me, four double 15 amp breakers. As you can see, I kind of customized this box. It's not really to code, but you know, it works really well. I've been doing this for 12 years now. Never had a problem. That box stays all year long. The output of that box wires out to some sub boxes. You can see one right there. So that's a double, double gang box. So it's just a you know, double gang box with double outlets on it. And then I cut the little trim wire between the outlets so that each outlet is independent and 15 amps. So I've got eight outputs out of here, two off each breaker. So I bring two breakers worth over to one box here. So each of those ports are 15 amps. 
And then I've got another box down just a little bit further right there and another box there with 15 amps on each port there. And those four outputs on each box or eight outputs total is how I run the entire show. Everything is run off that. And that wire, again, from those Anderson plugs back is all temporary. That wire is just strung on the side of the house across some hangers across my garage door, then over here and then under the eave, and then around under the eave, and then down this side. And then again, I just run it in the bottom of my electrical box into a 60 amp, or excuse me, 80 amp fuse, double breaker. And that's how I run the show. So that is enough power to run everything. One of the biggest things that we like from our show is what we call our multi-face. And here in the daytime, you can clearly see it's just a multitude of different faces on a board that's probably three and a half by six and a half feet tall, a little smaller than a four by eight sheet. And all I did basically was use like a drawing program and I drew a Santa face, then I drew an elf face and then a a singer face and a frosty face and all of them and I just kind of laid them all on top of each other. So if you look closely there is a in the mouth area there's clearly defined mouth movements and then on the sides there are some mustache areas. You can see down below there's a beard and then there's a kind of elf collar and then on the top you've got um, different hairstyles as well. You get different ears. There are roundy ears or pointy ears depending on if you want a person or an elf. And then a brim of the cap, I did kind of those uh, those little peaks. There's a little peak there and a little peak there. Those are kind of more reminiscent of like top hat. And then I've got just a regular, a regular circular top on it. And that's more reminiscent of a stocking cap. So you can kind of see there that a stocking cap could fire with the little tassel at the end, or I can fire a top hat like for Frosty. And then at the very top, I made the top hat a little bit bigger and it's now kind of like a, like an angel halo. So any different songs. So like when Burl Ives is singing Frosty the Snowman, I can have a face looking like Burl Ives. And if Frosty is singing, I can turn it to look like a Frosty face. And all those different sorts of faces. If Celine Dion is singing Oh Holy Night, I can have little wisps of hair coming off the side and then a little angel halo over her head as she sings, which is kind of cool. So again, this was built probably 10 years ago before the big uh, introduction of matrices. And that's got about 350 or 400 pixels on it, somewhere in that range. And then they're all custom modeled through X-Lights for all the different faces that I want to fire in different times of the, of the show. That is all run by a eight port Culp, a K8B, that is on the back of that panel. Also run off that panel are the two custom snowflakes. Those are just some angle iron that I had left over. I welded it all together, welded in some tent stakes. All those little, those little prongs sticking out are just tent stakes. You can get a five pack of them from Walmart for like a buck. And so yeah, just welded a bunch of those on, zip tied on each of the pixels. You can kind of see they're just bullet pixels that are just zip tied onto that frame. And then again, thanks to the beauty of custom modeling and X-Lights, I'm able to do whatever I want to do with those snowflakes. That is a little bit about the multi-face. A lot of my sequencing is also done with floodlights. So underneath the eave here, you can see some of those rainbow floods. And I just have them just a simple plastic enclosure with a little desiccant in there in case any water gets in. Those sit under my eaves and they'll sit all year long. I just leave them there because they're not really exposed to the sun. So there are four of them under this eave. There's my little security camera. And then on top of the little bump out roof structure there, I've got four more. And those four I take down. Inside that box up there, I'm not gonna go up there, is very similar to the other boxes I've shown in the video. You've got a couple of power supplies on the side You've got a K8B that runs all the different eave structures over here, all the different lights on the eave boards. And then there's also a floodlight DMX controller that runs the floodlights. Very simple layout. One of the main features of the display is this big screen I've got. 
Everybody always asks, is that a TV? Well, no, it's not. It is a P5 matrix, and it's six high by six wide, so it's 36 panels. I believe I'm gonna rebuild that for next year and make it eight by eight. But anyway, it is about 40 feet, 45 feet from the road, and it's about 80 or 90 feet away from where people watch, so it works really well. It's got excellent resolution, and it really does look like a high-definition video. It's just a beautiful screen. What's running that is a color light board that I just recently did from this year. On the back of the board, kind of hard to see, there is a color light board in there that runs the system. And there are multiple points. There's the color light up there. And then there are multiple points where all the power comes and gets in. But that color light board is a huge improvement over the Octo Scroller that I had before. Octo Scroller couldn't handle the resolution or refresh rate of a P5, but those color light boards work extremely well. They are just awesome. It makes the video quality and audio, or excuse me, video quality and color quality very, very good. The panel is connected with these cables here. There are three or four, looks like five, six. Six wires here for power. And again, power and ground. And they go in through these Anderson plugs. So all I do is just disconnect those plugs. And then I disconnect the, the data wire, which is the black wire here. I disconnect that from the board inside here. And then that matrix can be moved. That matrix is very simply made. I just use some like half inch by one and a half little pine boards. And I made kind of a picture frame as you can kind of see here. I made a picture frame on the front and then I made another picture frame from the back. And then in between, I sandwich a, a strap, a silver strap. You can buy those concrete straps at Home Depot. And the straps is what is holding the, the frame of the panels together. And then that strapping runs just a little long and I sandwich it between the two different frames. So this entire frame, this entire six by six matrix weighs maybe 45 pounds at most. It's very, very light, very easy to manhandle with one person. Inside the box here, this is my main, this is my main box. I've got the three power supplies here and those are the five volts that run the main matrix. They also run the board over here, which is a Culp K8. And that um, runs some of the stuff here on the front of the house, like the 3D printed snowflakes that I made and a couple of those. And then this also runs the 3D printed snowflake array, which I built here. I just used some fence post. I 3D printed some brackets that hold on to the fence post and then go off on an angle, of course. A little piece of PVC pipe. And then each of these are held together with a little connector, a little tiny connector that I can just take off. So this structure itself goes up for Halloween and then on each of the arms, I put a little, uh, little spider. So for Halloween, it's my spider array and for Christmas, it's my snowflake array. And there are 12 snowflakes that go all the way up to the top in this kind of swooping motion. Beautiful effect during the show to be able to run washes and run different things up and down that to give that motion for the display. And again, it's just tied to the tree. It's a very simple design. I like to try and make everything as light as I possibly can so I can take it down and set it up myself. And I don't have to have anyone helping. These are my outdoor speakers. Being in Arizona, a lot of people walk and stand outside when they're watching the show. So we do let the music play outside and neighbors don't mind it one bit. Most of the neighbors that are nearby, they don't have any problems with the sound. Matter of fact, a lot of them love it every night. Also, lastly in here is my, that's the pie right there that is running the show. That's the show pie, I had to look. <laughs> this is the pie that runs through the gigabit adapter switch that runs the matrix and the color light board. So that is my main controller box for the show. Oh, and hello there, kind of hard to see. A little gray thing over there is my FM transmitter, 87.9. And then the blue thing right there is the little digital amplifier that runs the speakers right here on the, on the ledge. 
There's how I keep everything straight. I have everything in an Excel spreadsheet with all the different things, all the different settings that I need for all the different controllers. Here's the right side of the show. This is the other Washington Palm tree matricy. Again, it's 150 pixels tall on two inch spacing, 16 strings wide, power injected every 50 pixels or so. And you'll see the two inch spacing gives a really nice rendition for both text and graphics. I've got singing faces that I put on these things and they work out really well. Then again, at the top, I've got little palm fronds that stick out to the side, mimicking what the palm tree looks like at night. And then lastly, there's one more little floodlight right there. That's one of those rainbow floods as well, just to give a little extra color at the top there into the canopy. Beautiful effect during the day. Or excuse me, during night. Here's the control box for the right side of the show. There's a Culp K8 right there. There's the serial connection coming out the side, running the DMX boards and the little rainbow flood for the floodlights. There's five volt power supplies again to run all the tree matrix pixels. That's 2,400 pixels or so. And again, we've got one of those little four port mono price switches that work out so well. Last thing I wanna talk about is how I wire my incandescence. So each of my little trees, these medium trees and the little mini trees out in front. Those are run into a little weatherproof box, tiny little box right here. And inside this box, I made some dongles. That is a Cat 5 to a, to a female plug. So coming out of that Cat 5, I get four plugs. So on the eight wire Cat, I can run four two wire circuits. So each cat wire, yes, I'm running 110 volts over cat, but it's such a low amperage, it's less than an amp, it handles it no problem, no heating, no nothing. But what it does is it simplifies my wires. So I can have these four cat wires run eight trees with two colors on each. So that's 16 circuits or 16 channels on four category five wires. So I just cut those wires custom length, just kind of put a little uh, heat shrink every couple of feet to hold them together. And that is my custom wire for each of the trees. There's one set and then here's the other set that goes down the front to the yard. The front one is about 80 feet long from the controller to the trees. I get no voltage drop or no appreciable difference in quality between the two trees. And because it's AC, it actually goes through that wire pretty well. So that's how I wire my incandescence is through the cat. Again, on this side, there are cable glands to protect for wire intrusion or for water intrusion. And then on this side, we've got a cover that keeps the rain out as well. And then there's my setup for, for this box. I list each of the controllers, what their controller addresses are, what the controllers ports are, what their starting and ending channel count is where the dmx is and their starting and ending channel count and what's run for both halloween and for christmas just a really nice way that i keep everything straight all right one of the other nice things of our show is this bethlehem star it's kind of turned a little bit in the wind last night and so up there is a custom welded it's about five feet tall it's uh, some angle iron actually, and it's got 161 pixels on it. And they're the square node pixels, and they're all just held on with zip ties. Now, unfortunately, if I would do that over, I would do that differently because that thing is up in the sun all the time and those zip ties do rot. Anyway, so that's a custom model, and that is sitting on two 10-foot sections of fence topper. So I just put the two toppers together, secured them with some screws kind of in the middle, Connected them with a bracket to my eave right there. And then I put another bracket off of that little, that little wrought iron thing on my window. And then it sits on my roof line. And that right there is run off of that box. And it's a very simple power injected every 50 or so pixels. Very simple 161 model. 
and that looks great at night because it just looks like it's floating above the house. You can't see the pole or anything. All you see is the lights. It's really pretty. There is another custom made snowflake. A snowflake was made with just some simple metal bought from Home Depot and then a whole bunch of little tent stakes. All those little arms sticking out from the main arms are just tent stakes. You can get like a five pack at Walmart for like a buck. Then I just welded them on and then zip tied all the little pixels onto each arm. I believe that element has, that prop has about 330 pixels on it, something like that. Definitely one of the main stars of the show. I'll be probably making another three or four for next year. But those are beautiful aspects. So that is our main star, our snowflake. Here's another little snowflake. And then I've got two more way in the back there that can hard to see from this angle. But you can see those from the street really well. All right. The main lighting on the house are these boards that I call Eve boards. And if we look really closely, you can see that it is a separate board. It's like a melamine type board. And I bought a four by eight sheet from Home Depot. And I just had them rip it down all the way down to four inch sections. They're eight feet long by four feet. On each of those boards, I hang all the different features that I want. I've got incandescent, warm white, or excuse me, um, icicle lights. And then I've got cool white and cool blue icicles. And then up there, I've got flat pixels, I've got bullet pixels, and I've got C7 incandescent lights. So I kind of have the gamut. Oh, and also blinder, like spot type lights. Those turn on all over the place and it kind of shines really bright at you. I can pretty much do anything I want with my sequencing. I can run chases. I can have chases running across, you know, in one direction with the C9s, and I can have chases coming back the other direction on the flat pixels. Or I can have the chases running together. I can do kind of whatever I want. It also puts a great color wash on the house. Each of those boards, like I said, is about eight feet long. So I just go up on my ladder and about three screws holds each section onto my Eve. And then at each point, I installed these Molex plugs. They're 15 conductor plugs. And then each of my signals can pass from board to board. And then I just pull the plugs apart when I pull down each section one by one at a time. So literally my entire house, I think I've got about 26 sections on the house overall. I can literally have this pulled down in a matter of a couple hours. It's very easy just to go up on a ladder, pull the connections of the two Molex plugs pull the cordless drill out of my pocket and hit those last couple screws and they come right down. Really simple, simple procedure. Each of these, uh, the, the power comes in on this side over here and then the signal runs all the way down to this end. And then at this very end, I also inject power. So I bring power all the way down to this end and then I inject it and then it comes back on the C9s coming all the way back down. So it gives a really good color wash and good power for the entire run. And lastly, one of the most recent ads from a couple years ago. This was a mega tree that I had first built. These are just half inch PVC that I drilled on four inch spacing for my mega tree. And those were about 12 feet tall, something like that. And I've since gotten away from that. I've gone to the Buscoil strips on the mega tree. So I had all these sticks and pixels left over, so I was wondering what to do with them, so I decided to make them verts on the house. And those verts work out really well. They really did add a new dimension to the house. And you can see they're kind of everywhere on the house. Everywhere you see those green lines are where I put those pieces of that old mega tree. So it was a really good use of the tree after I broke it down. And those are all run by different controllers all over the house.